may well-regulated militia be necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. Glad you've joined us on the program today. Uh, on the show, we're going to be taking a look at a, uh, a new threat to the Second Amendment, this one in the defense authorization bill. Uh, you know, Joe Biden is having a very difficult time getting his uh, gun control legislation through Congress because it's so closely divided. There aren't 60 votes in the Senate even for his uh, universal background check bill, much less his ban on modern sporting rifles. But Anakin Democrats may have found a way to slip some gun control, again, into a must-pass bill. This is from uh, American Military News. Military courts could order red flag gun confiscation under this defense bill. And uh, according to uh, American Military News, they say uh, 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 buried in this 1,300-page uh, piece of legislation, there is a red flag provision. Uh, they write that the, those beholden to the U.S. Code of Military Justice could be issued a, quote, military court protective order by a military judge or a magistrate which would make possessing, receiving, or otherwise accessing a firearm illegal. Yeah. Now, it seems to me that if uh, you don't believe that a member of the military should be around a firearm, probably shouldn't be a member of the military to begin with here. Uh, But uh, according to the language of this bill, quote, a military court protective order issued on an ex part basis shall restrain a person from possessing, receiving or otherwise accessing a firearm and a military court protective order issued after the person to be subject to the order has received notice and opportunity to be heard on the order shall restrain such person from possessing, receiving or otherwise accessing a firearm in accordance with a section 922 of title Uh, 18 of the U.S. Code. As American Military News writes, uh, additionally, military court protective orders issued on that emergency basis are exempted from providing the recipient with the standard right to due process. Yeah. Instead, notice and opportunity to be heard must only be provided after an order was already issued. Well, with all due respect to the folks at American Military News, I don't know how much um, uh, writing they've done on red flag laws that uh, that that deal with civilians and not members of the military but that is standard and and, and defenders of these red flag laws claim that uh, that's fine for due process sure we can have this hearing a judge can issue an emergency order stripping you theoretically in a on a temporary basis from uh, uh, owning a firearm or possessing a gun or purchasing a gun and then a couple of weeks later or in the case uh, of the uh, the military standard that the Biden administration wants to adopt, 30 days later, then you get your day in court. Then you get to defend yourself. But that first ex parte hearing, you're not a part of. In fact, you may very well not even be aware that it's taking place, which is one of the problems, one of several problems, Uh, With these red flag provisions, whether they are uh, uh, aimed at civilians or members of the military, there really is no due process. Uh, The uh, section of the legislation uh, dealing with a proposed military red flag law goes on to say that uh, this protective order on an emergency basis may be issued on an ex parte basis under such rules and limitations as the president shall prescribe. So this would give Joe Biden... The ability, by the way, to establish the rules and the limitations on using red flags. Gee, I wonder if you would be conservative or if you would uh, have a rather expansive view of uh, how these red flags should be used. In the case of ex parte orders, notice an opportunity to be heard and to present evidence must be provided within a reasonable time, not to exceed 30 calendar days after the date on which the order is issued quote, sufficient to protect the respondent's due process rights. If you think that it is sufficient to uh, allow somebody to uh, provide a defense of themselves 30 days after a court has determined, now nah, you can't own a, you can't have a gun, I, 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 I completely disagree. I don't think that that is due process at all. Due process would provide those individuals the opportunity to address the claims made against them before a judge determines whether or not an individual is a danger to themselves or others, which, again, gets into some of the other issues with red flag laws. And we talked a little bit about them on yesterday's program because we were talking about Mark Herring and his uh, 
uh, uh, decision to uh, to push to expand red flag laws. Although, again, if you watch yesterday's program, I'm not sure Mark Herring really knows what he's talking about because he says he wants to use he wants to be able to use social media as evidence to uh, pursue a red flag order. The state of Virginia can already do that. Uh, so I don't even know that Herring even knows what the red flag issue is. I, I, I don't think Joe Biden does either, but I'm sure that the uh, folks who are writing this legislation, they are well aware of how these uh, extreme risk protection orders work or how they're implemented. Because I don't really think that they work all that well. Um, but again, beyond the fact that that you can have your guns taken from you, based on a one-sided hearing, and then a couple of weeks or maybe a month later, then you get to argue that that original decision was wrong and you should have your rights restored to you. That, that's not due process. But I'm very curious to see how this would work in a military court because in civilian courts, you're not entitled, even though it's the state coming after you, right? If you have a, a red flag order filed against you, it's going to be uh, the state's attorney or the district attorney's office or in the Commonwealth of Virginia, it's the Commonwealth's attorney. But they're going to be the ones petitioning a judge to forbid you from owning firearms. And unlike a criminal court, where if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you, right? We have public defenders for those who are facing criminal offenses. Public defenders are not allowed to represent you in a civil case. And the, these red flag laws are considered civil cases. You don't have to be accused of a crime, much less arrested or convicted of a crime. So this isn't a criminal matter. And as such, you're not entitled to legal representation if you can't afford it. How's that going to work in a military court? Are you going to have an attorney provided to you after the fact? Or are you going to be on your own facing military attorneys. And then what about the standard of review? This is, again, another issue here. The standard of review that is typically used in a red flag proceeding is far lower than the standard of review that is used in a criminal case. So it's not beyond a reasonable doubt. It's, in essence, uh, if the judge believes that there's a 51% chance that uh, you pose a danger to yourself or others, you can have your guns taken from you. And by the way... That's where it stops. That, to me, is the biggest, well, beyond the constitutional issues. But from a practical standpoint, leave the Constitution aside. And I know gun control advocates love to do that. So let, 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 let's, let's, let's take it from their perspective. Let's, let's leave out the constitutional argument here. You've got somebody that's a danger to themselves or others. What do you do? You take their guns away. And then you leave them alone. Right? That's what red flag laws do. You, you can't have a gun. Well, what about a knife? Oh, yeah, you can have a knife. Just can't have a gun. What about, um, what about pills? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you, can have, you can have pills, but you can't have a gun because we're afraid you might hurt yourself. What about, a, what about a rope? Oh, yeah, no, that's cool. Belt? Yeah, fine. Shoelaces? Yep, no problem. Gasoline? Yeah, you can have gasoline. Oh, as much gas as you want to buy. Matches and gasoline? Oh, sure. Matches and gasoline? Fine. Just, just the guns we're worried about. Because you're a danger to yourself or others. So we got to take your guns away. But then what about the knives? No, the knives aren't an issue. Just the guns. How on earth does that make any sense? If somebody is a danger to themselves or others, it doesn't matter what they own. They're the danger, right? It's not whether or not they have a gun or a knife or car keys or gasoline. They're supposedly the danger. And yet red flag laws do nothing to address the supposedly dangerous individual. There's a determination that somebody is a danger or may be a danger, and then they pluck the, the legally owned firearms out of their uh, hands or out of their possession. And then the state, all right, good job, everybody. High five. What on earth does this accomplish? Other than taking somebody's guns away, but leaving the dangerous person behind. You know, <laughs> this is, uh, and by the way, in all 50 states and within the U.S. military, there are involuntary commitment laws. If somebody really is a danger to themselves or others, there are already laws on the books that would allow those individuals to undergo an evaluation by medical professionals if they truly do believe that, that this individual poses a danger, as opposed to a judge, by the way, hearing one side of the argument. 
These individuals can be examined by a medical professional. If the medical professional determines, yes, they do pose a danger to themselves or others, then they can be involuntarily committed. There is a process on the books right now to deal with individuals who truly are dangerous. And it's not a red flag law, which, again, is not about mental health. It's not about helping somebody out who's in a crisis. It is a gun control measure masquerading as a mental health proposal. And I'm hoping now that uh, attention is being raised to this proposed military red flag statute in the defense authorization bill uh, that we will see Republicans in the House and Senate uh, cry havoc and uh, refuse to vote for this. Now, again, that might not be enough. So far, Joe Manchin hasn't weighed in. Kirsten Sinema hasn't weighed in either. And of course, uh, they're the Democrats with a lot of power in the Senate. Will they go along with a military red flag law? Now, if I were a West Virginia or Arizona gun owner, I would certainly be contacting my senators and urging them to oppose such an unconstitutional infringement and abridgment of the rights of those who uh, fight and defend this country uh, and uh, our laws. All right, uh, let's let's move on to today's Armed Citizen story, our good deed of the day, uh, and our recidivist report as well. We'll start there, case out of Nashville, Tennessee, where police say a felon on probation shot a man in the leg during an attempted robbery. 32-year-old Melvin Comer Jr. on probation for several felony convictions, according to police, out of uh, Cannon County, Tennessee, when the uh, shooting occurred. Uh, Coma reportedly shot at two men in a car during an attempted robbery back on August 31st. The uh, 20-year-old driver sustained a gunshot wound to the leg. The 20-year-old passenger was unharmed. Coma is now charged with two counts of attempted murder. We don't have a whole lot of details about uh, uh, why uh, or or, or what felony convictions Mr. Comer was certainly uh, currently on probation for, but we'll uh, do our best to try to uh, find out additional details and maybe bring those to you in a future story. But I got to tell you, our armed citizen story today also has a strong recidivist report angle to it. Here's the headline. Robert shot, killed at Subway, was arrested in 2019 for a veteran's memorial theft. So this is an armed citizen story we first reported on. Actually, you know, I don't even know if we talked about it on the show. But there was a, uh, a robbery at a Subway restaurant in Albuquerque, New Mexico. A couple of weeks ago, happened right about the same time that this uh, there was another robbery at a subway, this time in Illinois. And the uh, the in Illinois, that actually became sort of national news for a minute because the sole employee who was working there at the subway fought back against the armed robber and was suspended after uh, surveillance footage appeared on the Internet. Yeah, that was the story that got a lot of attention. And I understand why. But the defensive gun use at a subway in Albuquerque, New Mexico, didn't really get a lot of attention, even though it happened uh, just, I think it was a day before the incident uh, in Illinois. Well, we have learned that the robber in that subway shooting in Albuquerque had a uh, a replica firearm that he intended the employees to, uh, to believe was a real gun. And one of the employees saw that gun, pulled out his own, shot and killed the robber, protecting himself and his co-workers. Now we're learning more about the criminal history of that armed robber. The Albuquerque Police Department says Francisco Monroy uh, was arrested in 2019 for the theft of the bronze shoes at the War on Terror Memorial in Albuquerque. Monroy uh, sold the shoes which were uh, valued at about $20,000. He sold the shoes at a recycling yard for 65 bucks. Yeah, he was never convicted of this crime, by the way. He was arrested, he was charged, but KRQE says the case stalled, and uh, ultimately the charges were dismissed. That was just two years ago. Uh, By the way, the uh, subway employee there in Albuquerque, not facing any charges, again, acting in the defense of himself and his co-workers. Uh, finally today, our good deed of the day, a uh, story out of uh, Michigan, 
where a police officer in the right place at the right time, willing to do the right thing to uh, pull a victim out of a burning home on Wednesday night, a hospice patient. This was in uh, Caledonia Township. Trooper Jacob Strong uh, discovered uh, one corner of the house engulfed in flames when he arrived. He knew that there were two people who were inside. So he made made interest into the home. He uh, discovered a woman who was trying to pull her husband out of his hospital bed. He's a hospice patient. And even though this gentleman may not have long left on this world, good Lord, to die in a house fire, uh, that's not the way anybody wants to see their loved one go. So as the ground floor of the home filled with smoke, the flames were spreading, Strong helped the wife move her husband from the bed. They were eventually able to get him out of the house. Uh, Deputies were able to help the husband down the front stairs. Still don't really know the cause of the fire. But uh, thankfully, again, because of the uh, quick actions of Trooper Jacob Strong, the uh, hospice patient uh, did not have to go uh, to the hospital, did not suffer any fatal injuries, and uh, hopefully will be able to live out the remainder of his days with his family by his side. Uh, This is a a tragic situation. If we learn of any uh, fundraising efforts for the family, because, you know, I can't imagine being the wife in that situation. You know, your husband only has a matter of days, maybe a matter of weeks left here on this earth, and all of a sudden your house suffers this uh, enormous amount of damage. I, 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 that, the, the weight on her shoulders right now must be nearly unbearable. So if you are the praying kind, keep her in your thoughts and prayers. And like I said, if we find any information on a uh, fundraiser for uh, this woman, we will certainly let you know about it. Uh, that is going to do it for this edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company. I do want to thank you for being a part of the program as always. Again, if you are a gun owner, and I assume that most of you, actually, even if you're not a gun owner, if you're listening to this, make sure you contact your House member, your state senator, tell them no on the uh, proposed red flag law for the members of our military. There is a, a much better way to address individuals who truly do pose a danger to themselves or others uh, than by imposing some sort of gun re- control restriction and leaving those individuals to their own devices. This is not the way to go about uh, improving mental health, but it is, again, another way for the Biden administration to try to impose more gun control laws on the American people. And we need to stand up and say no. All right, we'll be back on Monday with more of the latest Second Amendment news and information from all across the nation. Don't forget to check out BarryAndArms.com, however, uh, on Friday and throughout the weekend for all of the latest news that you need to know about when it comes to your right to keep and bear arms. Uh, we have seen, and we'll probably be writing more about this throughout the weekend, uh, a number of uh, briefs submitted to the Supreme Court in defense of New York's concealed carry laws. Uh, we'll be, we've already highlighted some of those, including the uh, ACLU's uh, a defense of New York's restrictive carry laws. So much for the civil rights organization fighting for the civil rights of all Americans. But uh, we'll be taking a closer look at some other briefs as well this weekend. Lots of other good stuff for you to check out there at BarryAndArms.com. And if you do like what you see, make sure that you sign up, become a VIP member. All you have to do, go to BarryAndArms.com slash subscribe. Use the promo code GUNS. You can get 25% off of your VIP membership. Uh, in return, as a way of us saying thanks and showing our uh, our appreciation for you, showing your support, we'll give you some uh, exclusive content like uh, news stories you won't get anywhere else, analysis of things like these legal briefs, and more. Again, it's our way of saying thank you because your support really does matter. Have yourself a great rest of your week, a fantastic weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Until then, be well, be safe, and be free. 